So there was a little bit of interesting talk amongst the Call of Duty scene yesterday as we got to see our first little bit of a taste as to what the online challenger divisions would kind of hold. Obviously it was, at least from the NA side of things, done by UMG. It was the $25,000 online tournament, one of the highest online tournaments that we've ever had. Like I said, it was a $25,000 prize pool. Uh, a major talk and the reason why we're, I'm making this video today is the fact that should pro teams be able to compete in online challenger division tournaments? Because for those who don't know, there obviously is a difference between online, uh, or there is a difference between challenger division and pro division teams for those who may not know most of you probably do but in case you don't uh, pro division teams are obviously the top 12 teams from the na those 12 teams compete every week in the call of duty world league uh, the lower or i could say the um challenger teams basically kind of considered amateur teams i don't honestly think that's just that's the correct title for at least some of them i mean some obviously most of them can be amateurs but there are a good amount that obviously are considered pros uh but either way those teams obviously are trying to compete uh, and grab as many challenger points as they possibly can through land such as umg south carolina and these online uh, tournaments and such things the bottom four teams from stage one will compete against the top four teams in challenger division points uh, in a relegation tournament I believe the day before the season uh, season one playoffs that will actually go on in a couple weeks uh, and obviously the, the victors of those games the top four teams from that tournament uh, will move on and be placed into stage two along with the other eight that had already been uh, you know qualified through that through their overall record so that was kind of confusing to mention I apologize for that but I want to make sure everyone knows what we're talking about and the reason why we're talking about this today so um, I so the main topic today is, you know, the, the, the tournament that happened yesterday, there was obviously pro teams competing in challenger division labeled tournaments. Now, is that supposed to be, should that actually be able to happen? Uh, I want to talk about that today. I was able to kind of read a couple articles from Deserto mentioning and talking about it. And also a good pal of mine named Tommy who actually had his, has his, had his opinion, excuse me, uh, in a video regarding and saying, you know, I don't think, or he didn't think that pro teams should be able to compete in challenger division tournaments. Now, I'm going to have a link uh, to that article by Deserto and also Tommy's video down in the description. Uh, these videos, in my opinion, were kind of in some ways leading factors in why I wanted to make my video. Uh, not stealing anyone's ideas, I just wanted to give it from a perspective of, of how I look at it. Maybe even kind of give a tale of both sides and have maybe even you guys in the comments decide what you guys think and how things should be moving on further. I first heard about the Challenger uh, tournaments actually at UMG South Carolina when I was attending there for casting and stuff like that. Actually walking back to my room, I believe it was on Sunday night when everything had kind of closed down and whatnot and, and stuff like that. And there were actually a couple of younger teams they came up to me and said, oh, he's a caster. You should ask him. And I was like, you know, I didn't really know what they were talking about. And so as we went up to the elevator, they're like, hey, do you know about these tournaments and whatnot that are going to be going on? You know, these number of different online tournaments hosted by UMG and ESL, both called Challenger Division. Because we heard that pro teams can actually compete. We don't think that's fair. And I was like, well, they're labeled Challenger Division. So I would assume, this is what I told them, because I really didn't know at the time. I was saying, I, I think since it's Challenge Division, it really wouldn't make sense to me to think that pro teams can compete in a Challenge Division labeled tournament. In which case, I told them that's my opinion. I don't know for sure. And they said, okay, it just doesn't make sense to us either, especially because it's, like I said, labeled Challenger Division. And still to this day, I mean, that was only, what, like last week or two weeks ago that, that happened. I still believe that same thing, that if it's labeled Challenge Division, that in some cases that should be Challenger Division teams. Now, I'm not trying to step on anyone's toes and say, hey, you know, pro teams have no right to compete for prize money. They have no right to compete in Challenger Division, you know, tournaments and whatnot. But if it's labeled Challenger Division and these are points kind of going toward uh, these players, you can see amp amp players or players that are considered Challenger teams, in some cases, you know, aren't they entitled to their own tournament? Now, I want to obviously give both sides to this. This was my initial thoughts, and I'll talk about how my opinions have kind of transgressed on and so on and so forth. There's a thing that always happens in the Call of Duty scene that kind of frustrates me, and I think we're a little bit different when it comes to other scenes, obviously, you know, different esports and so on and so forth. But when it comes to our scene, I feel like we're always left in the dark. If you are a um, fan of Call of Duty esports, but you're not as involved as a lot of people, you watch the tournaments, you, know, you watch a couple tournaments that happen, you're not super involved, you know the players, know the teams, but you just don't really know the whole format. And how certain things have gotten to where, the, to where they are. You are probably completely lost when it comes to these tournaments because it was announced at UMG. And I want to ask, I just want to ask this really quick because I honestly didn't know either for the longest time. This is, this is what kind of annoys me too. At UMG South Carolina, how many people who are watching this video currently, how many people actually know how many challenger points were given to the team that won first team liquid does anyone know I i'm just curious because i didn't know that at the tournament i didn't know what was going to happen with that and i don't think honestly a lot of people who were at the tournament maybe even umg in general didn't know that information and i'm not hating on umg i'm not hating on Treyarch. i'm not hating on the call of Duty world league by any means i'm just saying i think these things need to be brought out amongst the call of Duty scene because no one's left in the dark like i don't know the separation of the point difference between first place and second place i don't know for example if you're an amateur team and you're competing in these online tournaments how many challenger points 
points are you competing for? How many points are you getting in comparison to how many points were awarded at UMG South Carolina? Say, uh, I believe this is what I heard, and it might not even be true, and I don't know any facts to back this up or not. And some people might, I might be like one of the only people who don't know, but at least coming into the tournament, we don't, we didn't know really have an example of how many points were going to be given away and what the points ratio is. Like, do they win? 25,000 points or they win like 10 points like you know I, I don't really know like the point system ratio type of thing um but like I said, this is this is big for challenger point teams just in general. If they didn't compete at UMG South Carolina, or for example, if they just did not have uh, a good run at UMG South Carolina, how how does this compare to them in playing now in this online tournament? Do they even have a chance <laughs> to be realistic? Like, do they have to constantly place top four in these online tournaments to even compete with the top four, top eight that you know resided at UMG South Carolina for their points? That's just kind of a, a thing to kind of keep in the back of your mind. And I don't really want to get started, you know, as we kind of move on to the, the actual tournament itself, you know, with pro teams kind of being involved. I don't really want to get started with you know, the, how the format was done. I honestly have no idea how the format was done. I, I believe I was watching Liquid for the most part because I was kind of curious to see how they would do. They ended up placing pretty well, uh, you know, in the overall tournament and whatnot. But when it came down to it, I was kind of curious, you know, how would this work out? How would the teams kind of transgress on? Uh, at, at least, especially Team Liquid. And they were furious. Like, Merck was like, this is not the format we were told was going to happen. I didn't know the format. I mean, I wasn't told or wasn't informed informed yet again on how the tournament would kind of work out. Uh, I don't know how UMG did it, and I'm not hating on UMG by any means. Like I said, I, and I'm not saying this because I've worked with UMG in the past. I'm saying I just wish that these things were kind of brought out in the limelight and shown, and I don't know whose job that is. I don't know who needs to at least have that conversation with one another and says, hey, we need to at least let the fans, we need to let the teams, the players, everyone in the club that he's seen realize what is going on, what is at stake here, and how big these tournaments actually are. Because I don't, I personally have no idea how many challenger points, and like I said, I'm, not, I'm just kind of running back circles either way I was watching Team Liquid play. They were kind of furious. Uh, there was a number of different issues that were kind of going on with the tournament format. You know, the uh, different matchups that were happening very, very early on. Uh, Easy G, who's a very talented online team, uh, I believe, like the Easy G team who played in the online qualifiers for Stage One, who got really close to possibly qualifying, and that's when uh, Question Mark, who later turned into Rush, who later turned into TSM, uh, made the comeback on them. I think they actually had the reverse sweep against them. Uh, it's basically the exact same team, I believe. Apox was actually dropped. Uh, that's the only player difference for this team either way they're playing against team liquid in i believe the first round and that game went all the way to game five now i'm not saying that team liquid shouldn't have uh you know had a cl closely contested game and game and it seems that always round ones are one of the difficult rounds that you're always going to get but that's just due to nerves that's due to you you starting off in the tournament it's not it's, the, it's not that you're not warm but there were just like a number of different crazy matchups that were going on in round one and round two phase played c9 and i think round two or something like that like that that stuff shouldn't happen uh, there were a number of different random teams who didn't even compete at UMG South Carolina who were having buys in the first round and that didn't make sense to me either we were seeing a number of different crazy uh, games that were happening and don't don't get me wrong I don't mind crazy series going on but they shouldn't be happening in round one or round two they should kind of be happening as the tournament moves forward like a normal tournament should do so I'm not sure that would worked out I really think that they need to have a tournament format worked out based uh, and how they stick to it like I said I don't I don't know the full extent of it I don't know who's in charge of that stuff and I'm not putting the blame on anyone I just think like I said we need to have some communication kind of be broken down just in general and when it comes down to these challenger division tournaments it's labeled the challenger division 25k they need to either change the name or have something different be done because when it's labeled challenger division in my mind i separate challenger division and pro division teams because when you're going to umg south carolina there's two different tournaments for that there's two different tournaments there is the regular pro bracket you know of, of the 12 teams and obviously the top four teams who made it through the open bracket aka the challenger division those guys got awarded prize money they got awarded uh you know challenger points which like i said we don't know how many they've gotten yet or at least a lot of us don't or it wasn't really announced that was a separation. They also kind of combined the two. Now, in these tournaments, it should be labeled something different, at least in my opinion. If you're going to call it a Challenger Division, it should only be Challenger Division points. And like I said, I think, I can't remember who posted this and whatnot, but honestly, like, I, I feel really bad for the pros because there is so much prize money that's being given out to the Challenge Division teams. And in some cases, I don't blame for some of the pro players who maybe if, if this was in place, if the Challenge Division teams only could compete in these tournaments, if the pro teams were like, hey, you know what? They're getting more money than we are. We're the pro teams. How is that even go How is that even supposed to work? So in some ways, I, I think it's good. I liked the fact that these that the pro teams were playing against the Challenge Division teams. I like that. I want, I want, I want everyone who's watching this, uh, who hears about this to know, I like that these teams are playing. I like that this is happening. 
but in some cases if it's called a challenger division tournament only challenger division should be playing in that tournament based on its description i think i've, I've slammed that enough times but what i want to actually read a little bit of an article because there's there's a, a number of different things that kind of head in and i saw this is where i kind of get to my deserto article um you know moment where i kind of read their story and i was like oh yeah it's true um what actually means what this actually means is that pro teams don't all automatically get qualified for call of duty championships they actually have to compete and in some cases earn cod I think it's called World League Points, in which case both Challenger Division teams and also Pro teams get awarded these points, and I, I think it's like the top teams overall with those points end up qualifying for Call of Duty Championships. By the way, I'm going to read this little bit of an article. It's very, very short. It's like one paragraph long from the Call of Duty World League website, uh, or Call of Duty.com. Uh, uh, slash esports. I'll put this link down in the description for you guys if you guys want to uh, read along with me or just find out where it's at, but I'll have it on screen for you guys as I read it. So uh, it says World League points and call in the Call of Duty Championship. The Call of Duty Championship takes place in the in the fall of 2016. Pro Division teams will earn World League points. That's why I was talking about earlier, based on their performance in tournaments leading up to it. Is this one? Are these what some of those tournaments? I don't know because <laughs> to be honest, leading up to it could mean a number of different things. That's kind of a vague uh, type of sentence, at least in my opinion. Uh, either way, I lost where we're at. But, um, leading up to it with the best teams guaranteeing guaranteeing spots in the championship challenge division teams will also have the chance to earn world league points throughout the year to earn the right to qualify for the championship so it seems to me world league points challenger points different things challenge division points basically mean that you are uh, trying to compete in the call of duty world league call of duty world league points though mean that you're competing in the call of duty championship now i have not heard and i might just be misinformed here i don't know if these teams who are competing in these tournaments are given Call of Duty World League points. Now, I like to assume, and I don't know this for sure, but if it's called a Call of Duty Challenger Division tournament, then it should also be labeled something else because Call of Duty World League points are being involved. I don't know the ratio of Challenger points to World League points that these amateur teams are trying to award. Do, do amateur teams at this point, are, are, they, are they even guaranteed World League points? Like, I don't, that's the thing I don't know about this entire tournament. And also, are pros getting World League points through these tournaments? Or are they only just getting money through these? Because if it's just Challenger points being awarded and also prize money to the pro teams who can't have Challenger points then what's the point of calling it a challenge tournament if there's basically another half, not really another half, but there's, you know, 12 other pro teams who are in this tournament that are going to be happening constantly. So I just want to bring this to, to everyone's attention. I don't really know what's exactly happening. This was not a video to hate, to roast on anyone. I just think that there are some issues with the Call of Duty scene. And now that we have the Call of Duty World League in place, these things need to be brought out in the limelight so everyone knows what's exactly going on. Because there are a number of different issues. People are asking questions and there's no one to give the answers because people who have the answers don't really say anything. And that's the thing that I want to kind of be brought out uh, and talk about just in general. But guys, let me know in the comments what you guys think about these tournaments. You guys think the pro team should be able to compete? In my opinion, I think they should, but it should be labeled under something else, not the Challenger Division tournaments, like I've said a thousand times already. I do apologize for the amount of times that I've said that. But guys, like I said, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Leave a like if you guys did enjoy the video. And also, so make sure to subscribe for future content like this one as we get ready to kind of move on in the Call of Duty scene and talk about a number of different stuff that is going on, you know, weekly, I guess you could say. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video yet again. I'll See you all in the next one. Have a fantastic day. And until next time, peace out.